when the sun falls and the moon rises above Tarkov, what already may seem like an extremely dangerous place now becomes even more frightening. After all, humans are not nocturnal predators, and it's in the very foundation of our most basic instincts to fear the night. But with my help, you can conquer the night and make it your ally. And before long, you'll realize that although the darkness can conceal all kinds of hidden dangers, it can also turn you into a formidable fighter. Nighttime raids offer very significant and distinct advantages, as well as disadvantages over traditional daytime raids. The first and most obvious is that it's harder to see at night. Even with the best night vision in the game, targets at long range can be extremely difficult to see, and unless you're using thermal optics, targets can hide extremely well in heavy brush or wooded areas. This would be a disadvantage if you're trying to do a task such as Shooter Born in Heaven, where clear vision is needed. But if you're taking fire, you can completely lose your pursuer just by running into some brush. This lack of long-range visibility is important on maps such as Shoreline, Woods, and Reserve, where the risk of being sniped from extreme range is very common. Second, the behavior and types of PMCs you're likely to encounter at night is completely different than those at day. At night, you're far less likely to encounter large groups of players. Solo and duos are the most common in my experience. Also, nighttime players are often hitting a quest location or one or two high-value loot spawns and then leaving the raid as fast as possible, making the majority of the raid completely available to you to loot an area thoroughly. Also, night raids are generally less popular with the vast majority of the player base, and it is not uncommon to get lobbies that are not full, enabling you to complete tasks or run loot routes with much less fear of encountering other players. Also, all bots see much worse at nighttime. The detection range of all types of scavs, raiders, and bosses is significantly shorter at night, making approaching them much easier. Keep in mind though that sniper scavs can come equipped with night vision and maintain their usual engagement distances. Night raids are not without their risks however, as it can be more difficult to spot other PMCs, and players tend to move through night raids much more slowly and carefully, so staying attuned to the sounds around you is key. Also on woods, shoreline, and factory, you can encounter cultists, which are arguably the most difficult AI in the game. Learning their spawns is essential, and although you can try to avoid them, you should know how to deal with them. But in all, the main advantage to night raids is the decreased PMC competition, and near zero chance that you are sniped from long range. Although you can run night raids without night vision, I highly recommend you bring at least a basic set of NVGs as certain buildings and rooms can be extremely dark and flashlights have their limitations. There are four types of helmet mounted night vision. The Armasite N15 goggles, the PNV10Ts, the PVS14, and the GPNVGs. The Armasite N15s as well as the PNV10Ts are your most basic and the most popular form of night vision. The N15s cannot be mounted to a helmet but instead mount to a special head harness. Depending on your personal eyesight and the model of computer monitor you use, you may prefer one over the other. The N15s have a blue hue to them that some people like, but both types of night vision are low quality and very grainy. When testing night vision in offline, be sure to use a painkiller. The hyper sharpening effect of painkillers will increase the graininess of these lower quality night vision devices. These nods offer simple light amplification, even in the darkest of settings, and with binocular vision. But due to the graininess and overall low quality of the image, it can be extremely difficult to discern targets at medium range, and almost impossible at long range. The PVS-14 offers a significantly better image quality, but with one major drawback which is that it's a monocular. Monocular night vision in real life actually has some benefits, as one eye can focus on the night vision while the other eye maintains natural vision, which is great for sudden changes in light levels, such as walking into a brightly lit room. In Tarkov, however, our PMCs apparently walk around with one eye closed while wearing PVS-14, so your night vision will be restricted to a small circle at the center of your screen. It's completely up to you if you wish to trade binocular vision for the more restrictive but higher quality image, so be sure to do your own testing and offline. The GP NVGs are by far the most effective night vision goggles in the game. They offer the cleanest and sharpest image while offering the largest viewing area as well. In fact, the only drawback to the GP NVGs is its price. There are several barters to take advantage of, but you can buy them from Peacekeeper for $1,562, which is just a little over 200,000 rubles. Next is flashlights and their uses. Just because you have night vision doesn't mean that you won't need to use a flashlight in order to see. 
There are many situations where a flashlight is required to see properly, or where a flashlight can be used offensively. Take the second floor of the west wing of the health resort on Shoreline, for example. This hallway has indestructible work lights that will blind your PMC if you do not remove your night vision. You'd be far better off to tap N to swing your night vision up and proceed down this hallway with a flashlight, than be totally blinded by the light. There also may be situations where you must push another PMC, who is likely also wearing night vision. Removing your nods and pushing with your flashlight engaged may blind your enemy even more effectively if they are also wearing night vision, increasing your odds of success. Always maintain light discipline while raiding at night, however, as night vision equipped enemies will be able to detect a flashlight even easier than at day, revealing your position. Only use your flashlight in well-lit areas and to push enemies, or if your enemy is also using a flashlight. Moving at night can feel both liberating and a little frightening at the same time. If you're not used to night raids, you may fear that death is lurking behind every bush and tree. But in reality, you're usually far less likely to die in the open during the night than at day. That isn't to say that you should run across an open field just because it's nighttime. But on a map like Reserve, for example, moving between the two night buildings carries far less risk of being sniped from a position such as Dome. When outdoors, and while it's not raining, you'll notice that the moonlight can illuminate an area quite well with night vision. While moving to your target area, try to stick to shadowed areas, as the additional darkness will help conceal your movement. Another dead giveaway while wearing night vision is silhouetting yourself on the crest of a small hill. As you can see here, the outline of a player is far more hidden when you stick to low ground, valleys, and trenches. While indoors, sound is your greatest ally. Stop and listen frequently for movement especially when you've just arrived at a new area. And remember, night raids are typically more successful when you go at a slower pace than your average daytime raid. You don't need to camp or sit and listen for an excessive amount of time, but tune into any footsteps or suppressed gunfire you may hear in the area. Other than PMCs or bosses, the cultists may be the biggest threat to your safety during night raids. Not only do they remain hidden, use top tier armor and ammunition, and have the same laser beam accuracy as bosses and raiders, but they effectively strip you of one of your most valuable senses that you have at night, your hearing. Cultists move completely silently, even while sprinting, so you will have zero indication that they are moving towards you unless you see them do so. But cultists don't exactly make zero sound. If you are very close to them, they will make infrequent and very odd voice lines. They sniff, cough, whisper, and quietly moan when they are idle. Dude, it's scary as fuck. In most cases, avoiding cultists is the safest option, especially if you're conducting a night raid to complete a task. But if you are up for the challenge, and I do emphasize challenge, there's a few things to note. First, cultists only spawn on four maps. Shoreline, Customs, Woods, and Factory. Although their spawn chance on Nighttime Factory is extremely low. On the other maps, you can expect them to be in roughly one out of every three raids. On customs, they spawn in a very large area around the fortress, or pretty much the entire customs expansion zone. On shoreline, they can spawn on the spine rock formation and near the edge of the swamp near the path to lighthouse extract, as well as in and around both the east and west wings of the health resort. And on woods, they can spawn in very large areas near the marked circle next to the lumber camp as well as anywhere around the village near the second marked circle. On factory, they can be almost anywhere. Cultists will lay prone in the grass or in bushes, and sometimes crouch near rocks until aggroed. The only way to aggro them is to get very close to them, or to shoot one of them. If you have not shot them, and have spotted them, they will simply stare at you and not move, tracking your movement. It is extremely important that you do not shoot them until you are in an advantageous position to take them all on, as once you fire on them, they will engage you with their weapons with laser beam accuracy. If you aggro them by getting too close, they will attempt to stab you with their poison knives, adopting a hit and run technique. But as soon as you fire on them, they will switch to their weapons. If you are being followed by cultists and attempt to run away, they will follow you for a medium distance, maybe 100 or 150 meters, and then simply open fire on you. Occasionally, the cultists will switch back to their knife, even after shooting, but I don't know of a reliable way to repeat this behavior, so just be very careful. There's three ways you can fight cultists. Long range, close range, and the door method. 
Long range is the most reliable way to kill cultists that are out in the open, especially on woods. Cultists have a very low thermal signature, but a REAP IR can make detecting them easier. Shoot and kill one from long range, then immediately seek cover and wait several minutes for them to de-aggro before taking on the next. It is a long process, but once you are confident you got all of them, you can move in for the loot, but beware of one or two that you've missed. Close range is extremely, extremely tricky, and will almost always end in your death. This may be your only option, however, if they've surprised you. Your best option here is to find some kind of cover, but do not wait for them to find you. Be aggressive, and try to catch them while they're running around, as once they find you, you will likely not be looking in the right direction, and they will kill you quickly. I've actually done this as a scav many times. It's both exhilarating and horrifying. And finally, the door method. This works great for both a health resort on shoreline, but can also work on factory and perhaps customs at the fortress. Once you aggro and kill a cultist, immediately move into a small room and cover the doorway. You won't hear them coming, but as soon as a figure either tries to open your door or come through the doorway, you can mow them down. Cultists will typically continue to rush you one by one until they're all dead, but they often take their time, sending one after you, then waiting a few minutes, then sending another. And sometimes the cultist priest will hang back and you have to find and kill him. I've had the most success with this method. Oh yeah, and definitely remember to pack an antidote in your injector's case, as it is extremely difficult to outheal the unknown toxin. Cultists often carry extremely high-end loot, and you also need to be prepared for the fact that they wear high-end level 5 and 6 armor. In short, cultists are a force to be reckoned with, and as I said, in most cases you're better off giving their spawns a wide berth. But if you want to take on one of the greatest challenges in Tarkov, it can be a terrifyingly rewarding experience. With this knowledge, you can now move more confidently through Tarkov at night. I find night raids to be far more immersive and tactical in nature than daytime raids, and the more intense and slower pace of the gameplay feels perfect for a game like Escape from Tarkov. I hope that my experience has helped you gain confidence to run night raids, and although it can be a little spooky at first, you'll soon realize that you may actually survive more raids and accomplish more tasks at night than at day. As always, don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this, and join our Discord if you'd like to hang out with myself and the rest of the community. I'm gonna go wait for nightfall, so until next time, I'm Jeff with EUL Gaming, good luck out there.